We can all still be impressed at, at your range. Your I ability think to use a ramp. I think we should be impressed with the, the specifically the unnecessary amount of what just happened that just happened. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, with, with so this, there's the the fat yeah. with, with this with those insults, I think the assumption is if you were a woman and properly beautiful and feminine and you know, but that doesn't lady, make any sense. Then you, you wouldn't be playing a video game. You'd be out. I don't know, someone's girlfriend or something. Which I mean, it's so oh, it's so yeah. interesting. Um, because a I, you would think that because it's such a male dominated. Sphere, you would think that they'd actually be they, more catering. They were, they would be, you know, a demand for some sort of diversity. But it can be very homosocial in the idea that men are superior, superior to the women, which is a very common, just societal. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, a, that's, oh, not, that's, that's a normal not, person that's, problem. That's, a, that's not, not just a gaming. gaming. No. <laughs> that's just the idea that my normal interactions, my interactions with men on a, on a level. Of, Quality of homosocialness is so, are somehow superior than my interactions with women could possibly be. Get ya. Get ya, um, get ya. And also, the second thing that it makes me s just, I don't understand, it's just, I mean, you're calling me fat, ugly, or slutty, and it's the idea that, oh, because male gamers are portrayed as some sort of physical Adonises. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is what. Hypo hypocrisy yeah. in it. Right. The idea that. The stereotype of male gamers is that they're super fit or something. Maybe that's just <laughs> what they need to, you know, make themselves feel better. Maybe. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> on a more realistic point, it's not like, you know, super judgmental to every group. <laughs> um, this, this is actually, uh, the Fat Ugly or Slutty group, I, I actually mm -hmm. got to see them. They were had a panel at PAX mm -hmm. that I got to see, and it was led by the uh, chick who wrote the Metroid Other M review. Right, the one who got a lot of flack. She, yeah. In a, in a, in a very specifically gendered way. Which was interesting because she was doing a review right. about a game mm -hmm. where it's one of these main heroines, someone who's a very respected woman in, right. gaming. in gaming, as a gaming character. Um, I mean, there's not many others that get that same kind of respect that Samus does. I mean, Femshep is another one that people will defend to the death uh, as as a female that they really respect in gaming. Um, but uh, they, she, she took offense to how she was being depicted in this game. Depicted at Metroid Other M. Yeah. And everyone like came to Samus's rescue, but they did it by like just defiling this. This the reviewers, reviewer. right? So she devoted, like I would say, about half the review to talking about how the mechanics of the game weren't great, and then she talked about how the narrative was the good. narrative yeah. wasn't very good, and it really depicted Samus as someone. And some Samus has been her her whole legacy is that she is independent, silent, kind of very strong uh, protagonist and subservient to no one. And Metroid Other M really made her kind of subservient to this really whiny guy um, <laughs> yeah, it's not that interesting and it just kind of really it, it, it really took power I mean she felt that it really took power away from her and it really destroyed the narrative because this is a this is a character that we have all loved that is so powerful uh -huh. in, and this was game this was her argument I haven't right. I haven't played it I don't think you've played it I haven't we have so not we're played just, it but those we're are analyzing just right. her I mean our opinion is that's it's kind of beside the point but yeah, we're just analyzing her, just straight that's up what her she said. review. Yeah, that was what her review, and she was really bothered by it. Um, um, and and then, there was a lot of people, I mean, what she was talking about in her panel was like, yeah, they were, they were pretty comments. brutal of, and very specific about how they wanted her to be treated after her, basically, what they thought was her blaspheming. Right, it was the idea of she was being idol. somewhat of a feminazi. That's, yep, that's definitely the word that she um, used. The idea that she was somehow taking, you know, your gaming reviews should only be about mechanics, and you're taking feminism into this, and... I Which mean, is part of what we talked about in our last videos, where right. this is something we can discuss now in games, is the social aspects of it. Um, right. Especially in a review, I mean... Exactly. If there's, if there's a game that just does not have any kind of value compared to other similar games... 
then why should you, you know, purchase it? Exactly. Gorko! <laughs> or, or there's just Gorko, <laughs> and you can just play these games. You're gonna kill all those butterflies. Yup! <laughs> I saw them go down. <laughs> oh, those are souls that will rest heavy on you tonight, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they were just representative. They don't actually have any power. They were just placeholders. For this guy. And Malice. Cool, you got one of those creepy stones. Ew. It's a creepy stone. Loves putting those abilities in you. <laughs> You'll be rewarded with a shield stronger than any other. I'm gonna jack these guys' chests. What? What? <laughs> anyway, so... It was interesting because, I mean, it's hard, it's obviously speculative and it's hard to tell, but I feel as though the insults that she received were gendered in a very specific way that painted her as some sort of radical feminist, mm -hmm. preaching a really radical ideology. And, and just as just as bad as them, like, uh, like offending her, mm -hmm. they would also, like, spend a lot of it calling her, some not, they would, they would actually call her Morgan Webb, mm -hmm. another person right. on there, who does, you know, like to be in positions where she, she represents female gamers, even though um, she doesn't necessarily, you know, want to be like that person. She doesn't want to have to be in that position all the time, but she is in a strong strong position of power as, as a leader of women, um, in a similar sense to any other kind of, like, female actresses or other female luminaries. Yeah. But, um... It, it was just interesting, the idea... I think a lot of people were offended that a woman would bring up misogynist or like misogyny in a game and I feel in a game like, world one of, in a game world <laughs> I don't want to hear about this just right. like I don't want you just like any kind of political thing where it's like I don't want you forcing X down our right bodies. I don't want to be I don't want the I don't want to be you can fill an X and Y with that sounds like the worst kind of meme imaginable yeah. <laughs> stop filling your X's with our Y's well it's just like I don't want to your political ideology shoved down my throat, or I don't want to be pointed out that something I like could be misogynistic. Which or... is unfortunate, because that's a step backwards to the, basically where we want to go, where it's like, we, we do want to be able to explore these ideas. We do want to play Binding of Isaac and look at how religion is portrayed, because right. that's, that's good for us. That's something that games can do. Games are powerful enough now to really dig deep into important topics. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that's what... I mean, women can do that. <laughs> Anyone can review a game or critique a thing in any way they in any way they want. I mean, you can judge their level. You can critique their critiques. But to make judgments about them in the critique as part of the analysis is, yeah. not, is not something that moves you forward. That's not something that helps. Yeah, it's just... What the... Are you just sitting right. down? I feel like you bombed back. and destroyed this entire room. <laughs> Yet you haven't talked to Gorko yet. Oh, it's not Gorko. <laughs> Damn it, Golo! Golo, 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 What'd you do with Gorko? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a long game, and it's only getting longer from here. You're right. It's not the easiest of names. Golo, lo. Um. So, uh... Sweet Goro! Is okay. having is having these separated areas... Um, does that... Is that a proactive step in fostering... To, to have, like, separate relationships women's... of... Yeah. Um, is, that, is that a good, like, nesting point for women to be able to feel like they can integrate themselves more with I, this male-dominated medium? I mean, obviously, you don't want to create... Well, I mean, maybe there's an argument for it. Sorry, Gono. I don't know that you necessarily want to create a totally different environment for women, because then you just get a segregation. You get segregation happening, which is, yeah. I think, the opposite of kind of the end right. goal. Damn it. Um, but I think that women again. communities are important in that they, or women communities that are, are based around an ideology. Or, an, or communities that are based out around an ideology of supporting women, regardless of the gender of the people 
involved are important. Yeah. In the same way that communities that are about different interests and different Special commonalities interests. are important. Uh -huh. you know? Okay. So I, th I don't know that it's necessarily a bad thing that we have women-centered communities, mm. um, but I think that it, it, it's important that those communities oh, remain. Oh, so oh. in your way. He is really in Maybe your you way. need to rub his tummy. I, I don't know why that would help. Maybe it would as well. Oh, there you are. Yeah, because of superficial fondling is not the way to answer life's problems, Cindy. Were you superficially? I mean, don't get me wrong. That's that's usually the point where it goes from misogyny to sexual harassment. But or it goes from massage to sexual harassment. There's a fine like, line. Did you see what I did there? If I, I, I tried not to see it, but it was there. So I've got a, a couple of recent scenarios oh, yeah. that I want to discuss. Some things that came up in the news recently. Shouldn't be a sea of salt. A month ago, or I guess a couple weeks ago, um, there was a poster came out. And I don't know if you're familiar with this, but the uh, the Soul Calibur Five poster came out. I'm familiar with Soul Calibur, but I don't know about the poster. And the post it was a it was a Japanese poster, right? Um, where it was just Ivy's or the character. Actually, we don't even have a name of the character because it wasn't actually in Ivy's costume. Ivy. But it was one of these larger breast ladies. It was just their breasts. Uh huh. Um, and it had like a saucy tagline in the center of the breasts uh -huh. where it was like, uh, oh gosh, I don't even remember what it said, but it was, this is where, or, uh, gosh, I feel awful not knowing this. Um, but the only other redeeming part of um, the poster mm -hmm. was that, um, sorry, I'm just gonna go look this up real quick because why not? Um, poop, poop, poop. The other redeeming part of the poster is that fresh. Um, is that there is this uh, snake around the neck of. You see a little bit of the neck, and you see. Uh, what did I there we go. Oh. I've got it up. So you have this this woman. The cleavage of this woman's breasts. That's um, not you have the bottom of their face. And a snake that's wrapped around their neck, going down her uh, her breast line, and it says "Go big or go home." Is the tagline? I mean, as yeah, I meant saucy when I said it. Well, I think oh. so. Yeah, um, this is fighting game this is promotional. This is promotional stuff, and it is of a fighting game. No, um, it's sports. sports. Jiggly breasted, large breasted women. Mm-hmm. Not, not the prime premier one, but I mean, yeah. this, this did used to be a clean oh. fighting game. Having seen a not lot really, of but... Ivy. Um, well, first of all, I don't know, I mean, it's a fighting game. <laughs> I don't know how successful this is. <laughs> I'm getting, getting that across to anyone who would not. I mean, maybe Soul Calibur. This doesn't have anything to do with Soul Calibur. Yeah, maybe Soul Calibur is not of a, of a name. That's cool. Just a fighting game. Oh, well, yeah. I, I mean... But yeah, this doesn't have any fighting... Doesn't have anything to do with fighting, which is, I think, the, I mean, the <laughs> best. That actually might be their first flaw. The is best that game. they're not advertising to any kind of new <laughs> group. So why would you make a poster that's not advertising to? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you are just stepping on bugs. Nope, catch them. They think you're. They definitely. I, well, first of all, I love ad campaigns that don't tell you what they're. Every car commercial until that yeah, car shows are, up at right, the very end. It's the best. <laughs> um, well, first of all, fighting games are, are interesting because I think that while most genres have come a really long way in terms of the idea of, hey, maybe we shouldn't make our women just objects, objects or just boobies that our guys can look at, I think fighting games kind of rely on those, on really large archetypes, mm -hmm. right? Um, bear, stereotypes. And I think that's the whole idea of being larger than life, kind of silly, kind of campy, but at the same time I think that maybe, you know, maybe we should have the Native American guy fighting in the casino with, with <laughs> yeah. like, pink faux Native American, um, 
that's a reference to Mortal Kombat? That's a reference to almost every fighting game. <laughs> almost, <laughs> oh, almost, um, almost every fighting, fighting, fighting game. Didn't Street, Street Fighter or there's, he, it's the street, And they're all named like Thunderhawk or Nighthawk. Yes, Thunderhawk. There's like, they're all like Night Thunder or some sort of weird, you know, yeah. play on that. I mean, there's there is um, an ex- there's one extent where they are like really backwards thinking, yeah. or not even backwards, but like stagnant. I they mean, just kind of the... they just kind of have stopped. And I think that's because they just don't rely on that narrative. They kind of rely they're, on. They are really looking at mechanics. I mean, they're relying is... on the mechanics. They're also really relying on the larger than life image of the characters to kind of create their brand. You know. Since, yeah, it's hard because they do have this more stagnant genre than anything else yeah. that, I mean, a fighting game does not really gain all that much from better graphics. Like no. a, not a shooter game, a shooter or, or a platforming or... game, yeah. like uh, Nathan Drake and or Uncharted. Or like a narrative-based game. Like, or even, like, um... Fighting games have been fighting games have been fighting I'm games. Which is not a bad like thing, L- because... Like, L.A. Noir. Mm-hmm. Right. The only thing that they can really gain from is, like, just new fighting styles and um, um that that being said um oh, it's not bad because i mean posters, fighting games are fantastic this poster is ridiculous <laughs> it is it's just silly it's and that's just, not even games that's just bad pr i don't know if that's just, i that's if just I someone not do doing a their... critical analysis of this game and i mean people can say i'm overreacting all they want but you're I'm, overreacting all they right, want. Right, I'm being a feminazi and overreacting. Just, you know, why can't I take a joke? All that good stuff. Um, I think that... The poster okay. itself is indicative of this idea that female characters are just there to titillate the male audiences. Which makes two assumptions, but A female characters are vapid and not interesting and therefore don't have to be complex human beings and because if they're just going to be sexual objects then why are we going to bother making them complex human beings and interesting characters and also be the or they even don't have to they don't have to do that right it makes the excuse that we don't we don't have to create a narrative we don't have to spend that right effort right even maybe even money right because they're just there to be sexy for the people who want or the people who play the game the second assumption that um, often gets overlooked is that that is assuming that your entire fan base is are heterosexual males, mm-hmm. which is just just not true. I mean, maybe there's an argument to be said that a very large number of them are heterosexual males, but if you only cater to heterosexual males in terms of sexuality and in terms of character design and in terms of um, narrative and game style. Mm-hmm then you end up alienating a lot of these people who would otherwise play your game and enjoy yeah. your game and benefit and it from is kind of it is kind of pandering to them yeah it's it's um, and it's, it's kind of insulting them when you get like the the opposite example of this would be like a twisted metal <laughs> the new one it just came out um, and it it doesn't do this it doesn't really have any kind of titillation as its focus yeah um, and virtually anyway it does have female characters and they do have a specific role um, <laughs> And but I they're mean, not they're not like hypersexualized, even though this is a game that is has a primarily male audience. And this is a game that like a fighter is highly technical uh-huh. in its in both of its its balance and it's, it's a lot of machismo. And I mean to be totally <laughs> have, yeah. to be totally fail, fair, a lot of the male To be char- totally fail, like To be Michael. totally fail. To be totally fair, a lot of the male characters also kind of end up being objects because they just end up being Portraits of the machismo that these that a lot of um, these guys that are playing the game are expected to to be to be or expected to want to be or and you know. the the thing is that they don't have to be that's just right there's there's one end that is just kind of lazy of the imagine the designers of the game yeah. where once again twisted metal as a as a great example of a very very um, thoughtfully crafted game. That, that doesn't happen in that. Although, my other example does come from Twisted Metal. Something else that I, I oh, wanted to talk yeah. about um, is that yesterday was Valentine's Day. Yesterday was the day that uh, Twisted Metal came out. And one of the press releases 
um, from the des- from the, des- the lead designer David Jaffe. Um, his, it was a, a game trailers preview uh, where he was talking about the game, and at the very end of the game, his uh, the thing he says is that if you let your girlfriend play this game, if you let your girlfriend win, mm-hmm. that you, she will give you a fucking blowjob. Yeah. Was the was the line was from it? The line. And he uh, ended it. He ended an interview that way. That was that was the end of the vi- the video. Well, was the closing of it. The editor ended the video that way in his defense. If he's gonna, that's what I. Yeah, sure. The, I mean, okay. the the thing with this this video is that there's four minutes precluding this this ending of the video about the game and about how deep it and is just, and you know, all of the things that have nothing to do with it being released on Valentine's Day, have nothing to do with women, have nothing to do with blowjobs, have nothing to do with anything that is anywhere near this, but it is the... Right. It the ended game. up being his closing remark. And um, I didn't show you this. I showed you this. Yeah, we watched it. We watched it. Basically, right before, right before we started recording. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think there's a few things of interest to talk about. First, I think um, I think Kotaku actually did a pretty good article. Yeah, I showed you the, yeah. the Kotaku the article. The Kotaku article. Around. I think that is a fairly well-written article. Just to kind of re- um, go off of that, I think that um, obviously David Jaffe is known for being particularly crude and out there and like, swear and all that good stuff, and that's fine, and I don't have any problem with crude being crude. I don't think our moral... You know, the moral fabric of our society is going to disintegrate. Because yeah, of disintegrate because of some potty mouths being sexually perverse or being a potty mouth. Um, and I don't think David Jaffe is a misogynist, right? Uh huh. That think, was one of the things that was said of him was that he is he was, total misogynist. He was a misogynist. I think. And he was. That was the point where he was like, oh. that... Right, and, and no, the not. thing is, is that that completely <laughs> deteriorates any conversation we can have about what he said. It um, does. It colors it. You it colors. Yeah. yeah. It just because once you accuse someone of being a misogynist, then they shut down, and they're going to well, be what else on the defense, I mean, right? And because no one wants to be called a misogynist, just the same way no one wants to be called a racist or no one wants to be called homophobic necessarily. Um, you're you're judging the person. Right, you're making a judgment. You're making broad sweeps sweeps about that judgment that don't or about that the character that, that shut down and it's just exactly. A and you argument. can't then you can't make any evolution. Okay, so where what what does happen here? What is what? Okay, so the, I want to point out the reason why that statement is problematic, and it's just in the way that how what? how we Whee! oh my god you just completely <laughs> jumped off. I don't fucking feel this. <laughs> He was like, great, I did my job. <laughs> um, it, the, the problematic thing is just how we phrase women, or how, how we frame women in what we expect from them in a relationship and what do we expect them to act like, right? So the statement kind of implies that um, a couple things. Um, first, that a woman, a woman gives out sexual services in 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 for doing something for doing something for her, you know. If because you do something for her, then that is superficial, like letting her win a video game. Then she's gonna give out sexual services. For Although that. that is kind of the theme of Valentine's Day. I mean, that's an entirely. <laughs> I did. That was that not is a, a huge discussion. That is a can of worms. It's unfortunate because you don't want to accuse. I mean. And this is something that, like you said, like Valentine's Day, that is, the, like the example I gave was a, the the Teleflora ad that aimed that aired during the Super Bowl where it's Adriana Lima looking at the camera. I think you camera. stabbed that. And she's saying that Valentine's is simple. If you are Valentine's is simple, gentlemen. If you give, you shall receive, which is a, again. Not and very, she was, yeah, it was a provocative. Not very kind of thing. subtly indicating that. Women exchange sex for goods and services and for superficial and and the Davy Jaffe comment kind of Im- implies that women will give out superficial give out superficial sex acts or sex acts for superficial things like playing a video game. Mm-hmm. It also assumes that m- men should manipulate their girlfriends into receiving sexual services, which I think really pa- paints men in a really unfortunate way. Yeah. Um, and it kind of, it also kind of implies, 
kind of tangentially that women can't win. Uh, no, but yeah, they can't. <laughs> Twisted Metal is hard. I played it and got <laughs> just rocked. Right, and that's it's a kind hard of, game. It's kind of implying that a, a girlfriend. I figure if I did play play a girl in it, that they would kind of rock me because it is hard. <laughs> right, and it, it's kind of implying that girls can't win on their own, and that the only people who actually play Twisted Metal to play Twisted Metal are heterosexual males. Yeah, it does... I mean, that also... That, right. And the I weird thing is that he is based in L.A. Oh, yeah. Which and is, that's <laughs> the thing. I don't think he is a misogynist. I don't think he is sexist. I don't think he is trying to imply... Trying to actually say any of those things. But no, I, think I don't think he really important. means it. It right. seemed more like a rope kind of comment. Right, but it's... I th and I, I definitely agree that it's a rope comment. But I think what's important is to understand that when we say things, they're going to be framed in specific ways. And if we decide to frame our comments in a way that, you know, under these assumptions, if we decide to have these comments under the assumptions of what is expected of women or what women are like... You you're know? on fire. Yeah, he was on fire. You're just on fire today. Oh. Oh. Beep, 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 beep. Um, so there's, it seems like there's kind of a two-part failure to this. I mean, there is, he is to be blamed for his comments, and he does definitely right. apologize for the crassness yeah. of his comments as being someone who's representing this game. Yeah, and that's, that's another dimension, I feel as though he was trying to advertise a game, and the first, Stop, drop, and the roll. first four minutes of the interview were really good, I thought, and he really yeah. talked about... They were very professional, they were very right, uh, really human and exciting. It was, it it was really engaging. interesting. It was, it was a, great a really interview. interesting interview. Which is what makes this, this part of it just so out there. Right. Um, so, first of all, I think... But know, then there's also the failure of game trailers. Yeah, because they edited the interview in a specific way. To have this like funny comment at the end, mm -hmm. or that was the idea was that it was just, this was the kind of the climax, eh, right? And of so the, um, of the video, mm -hmm. but it's it does make these frames right. That and I mean the f are strange. The reason that that comment might be funny, right, is that women and women For the relationships wrong reasons. are framed <laughs> in that way. Like you can only get humor from that. If you under if you have the point of view that women give out services or give so out this isn't, services. This isn't misogynistic, this isn't like pure evil. This no. is just thoroughly bad taste. Yeah, and I, th I think <laughs> that it's important to, the, to its most thorough extent. It's important to understand that most of the a lot of the things we say um, may not necessarily it could it's not necessarily intent we intentionally racist or intentionally sexist or intentionally homophobic but it can be framed and it can be said with the assumptions of underlying racism or homophobia or mm -hmm. misogyny and if we accept those standards for how we are going to frame our comments then we're kind of perpetuating it has a door yes. it has a door then we end There's up a door on the you know it's cool though. There were bugs on top, and you scared them away. Then, then we end up perpetuating. Stool! <laughs> Perfect timing. How about you suck a dick, Fi? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Did you just kill her? Oh no. I wish. Oh wait, so they—that wasn't. They just literally mean you should just sit there. They put that stool in the room just so you would sit down on it, not actually to reheal. <laughs> they just want you to sit there. No, they don't want me to sit there. She told me not to. Oh. It's like, get off your ass. You're looking for shit. Oh, because there's there's sand everywhere. But the seat was nice. It was well timed. But um anyway, so if we if we allow those standards to influence the way we think and the way we say things. The standards that we just let right. uh, we just, Michael make these giant... I know. <laughs> could, he, could he just... Worst timing? <laughs> I know, I don't know. That hey, 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 now, 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 product of my society. No, 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 wait. You guys are assuming that sucking dick is only a thing women can do. I did not make any preference to gender. I just told her to suck right, a dick but if because you she... Tell, if you tell a man to suck a dick, isn't it 
abiding by the homophobia of sucking a dick. Mm. What if you tell someone I'm gender to suck a dick? Cindy. Well, it's still kind of an idea I, of I think there's, right? there's a point it's to a, where... I feel like if you want to take it that way, sure. I mean, obviously, I, we could spend a long time... I think Michael just really wanted to say suck like a dick. A... <laughs> no. Not to, yeah, I think, I think no, that I, might be, I've that's been, what he's saying. I think the fact that I've been Michael's just like, I've been trying to keep out of this conversation as long as I can, because to be quite honest, you people are just thinking way too much about it in my opinion. But yeah. that is just my opinion, and I'm not going to say any more about the subject. Continue, ignore my but comment, I, I have a C chart, I'm going to go do some <laughs> saying. I right. think that it's important to think about these things, not necessarily in order to find ways to be more offended, but in order to understand the basis on what, on how we talk to each other and how we interact with each other and what we say about each other. I think the fact that women are just... 90% chance. Pretty good. Pretty good. You should just do it. Because there's, a, there's only 10% chance she's wrong. I want to just be really, really wrong one of these times. Oh, it's a, there's a cupboard here and there's, no, there's nothing even in it. I, I think if we don't think critically about the way we interact with people, then we can't evolve how we think in order to kind of reach more a more equal and a more fair and a more compassionate, you know, society. Yeah, that we, we just need to frame the discussion differently. Right, and I think just that... Just say different words at different times. I mean, there might be an argument to say that there's too much focus on what David Jaffe said and we're overthinking it, but I think it's important that we actually think critically about the assumptions we make when we talk and when we make comments like that. Because if and we... And we're in a place where we can. Right. I mean, this is just the same discussion that anyone else is going to have with their pals just hanging out. Yeah. If this is the topic that comes up, it's if, like, what does this mean? If we, uh, well, if we say things... <laughs> if we say things that... This has a lot of meaning to me. Yeah. This is well, what I think about it. It's just everything we say, that everything we say is, we can't divorce things we say from history or from society. And I think it's a, it's a mistake to to think that we can just because it's in the past. Especially because, in games. Especially yeah. that's what people try to do a lot with games, mm -hmm. is to say that they don't have as much meaning as they do when, well, they, they do. Well, why wouldn't they? That's, I mean... This is, this is just us explaining the parts that we like and the things that we want to see from games. So this that's what, what makes them so great and so powerful to us, is that, I mean, they, they make us feel these ways. This is why we want to defend them, this is why we want to defend each other, this is why we make communities around it. But... Um, to bring it, to I kind of bring this back here. Like, this part is amazing. I've just been watching the this ship sailing in the sea sand, in the sand of sea, and wherever it goes, it becomes this beautiful forming thing. This is like the coolest thing that this game has shown us so far. This is cool or what? And I think there's a point to where it's like, this is important for us to understand why this is awesome. Because <laughs> look, you're you're uncovering the, the, the realm of the past while you're sailing in what looks like a desert. It looks like this just totally, total wasteland. And then, and then there's that, so it... <laughs> um, Ready, cannon! Anyway, anyway, I just wanted to say that if... The things we say, like, like... I don't know, I'm trying to think of yeah, a better example. Uh, it's just a, yeah. Like, um, the things we say can't be divorced from... The they're not ahistorical, they can't be divorced from society, they're not, they don't exist in a vacuum, they're implications. The idea is that this is all fluid. Right? Well, right, and I'm not yeah. saying they're not, but it seems like, I at least in some itty bitty part, the intent of the person who said it should be taken into a court. Sure, sure, and I'm not, that's what I'm saying, I don't think he intended to insult women or to make a misogynistic comment. Yeah. But I think that doesn't change the fact that the basis, the framework on which he makes the comment, the assumptions that are necessary in order to understand the comment, and the assumptions that are necessary coaster? to make sense of why the oh. comment is funny, are inherently problematic. Let's and see. if we allow those assumptions to continue, then they end up being perpetuated in 
in a way. They end up being perpetuated as the standard by which we make.